Welcome back. In this video, we are going to explain our fitness function. Remember always, when you use genetic algorithms to solve a certain problem, two extremely important points are number one, the representation of the solution, number two, the fitness function. Fitness function can be different for each different problem. In our case, here's what we're going to do exactly the same as we did before for the binary, binary representation problem that we uh, had a look at in the previous videos. So, for each candidate solution, we will check the array elements for collinearity. The, the idea is as follows. We check the first element against the second, the second against the third, the third against the fourth, all, all the way up until the ninth against the tenth. That means we will have nine pairwise comparisons because, as we mentioned, our solutions consists of 10 elements um, now we will count the number of adjacent and collinear pairs that means if for example when we compare the first against the second if they if both if they are collinear and ad adjacent then that would count as one if the second against the third if both of them if the two elements are adjacent and collinear that counts as two and so on and so forth which means because we do nine pairwise comparisons if all is true we will end up with number nine so if the number is nine then indeed the elements do form a dashed line and we have found the solution however if this number is not nine then the elements do not form a dashed solution a dashed line but we will keep track of the best solution so far so let's have a look at this figure here we have the dashes we compared the collinearity, I'm sorry, we compare adjacency, how close they are using a variable called dash, dash separation as we explained in the previous videos. And then we check the collinearity using this idea of the radius of collinearity. One thing I'd like to mention here is this idea of keeping track of the best solution so far. In our case here, we know the solution, which is, you know, the comparisons return 9. But in real life, we don't know the solution. If we know the solution, then what's the point of you know doing this anyway uh, for example for the traveling salesman problem we don't know the solution but we want to keep track of the best solution so far in that problem the TSP problem we're looking for the shortest distance or the lowest cost right so fitness function will be looking at you know as you know as low as possible for, for of the value of the output value whereas in our case we want as high as possible and our highest is nine remember here we know the solution already which is to have the number nine but uh, in in many cases we don't know the solution this is why we keep track of the best solution so far right let's have a look some at, have a look at some code now this is my fitness function i named it here eval solution it returns an integer the number of comparisons number of successful comparisons uh, we send it a chromosome the array from the population as we explained before i keep reminding myself anew that the fitness function will change for every problem domain. Now we need to work out how good this population member is. I transform it into a dash. Again, just for demonstration purposes, you, we can use the array immediately, no problem with that. And then what we do is, we just compare each element with the element after it. So I compared, compared to I plus one, so zero compared the element at index zero, compared with element at index one and then co compare element at index 1 against co element at index 0 and so on and so forth we have these two methods in our utility class uh, check checks whether the two dashes are collinear other method checks whether two, the two dashes are uh, adjacent we explained this before by the way the link to the code will be below this video so you can find it and have a look this is the utility class for example adjacent dashes uh, it, they you know receives two um, parameters of type dash and then it makes sure it, this one checks whether they are adjacent or not comparing the distance between them against the dash separation distance and the other one which is the collinear dashes it just checks basically uh, it draws an imaginary line between the furthest two endpoints of the two of the two uh, um, dashes and then checks the other two points how far they are from that line basically yeah against the radius of collinearity this ROC uh, variable anyway we count the number of successful uh, uh, comparisons number of collinear adjacency 
list and we return it so if that number is 9 that means we've found the solution if not then we keep track of the best solution so far I'll show you how we do that how we keep track of the best solution so far in the next few videos so I'm going to stop here and then we'll have a look at more of the implementation and we'll execute it as so you can see uh, how it actually works thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video